I've never really been much of a fan of milk chocolate as an adult, especially since I started working in food. Dark chocolate generally has much more interesting, complex, intense flavours. But I have had a few very high quality milk chocolates that did stand up next to the dark stuff. None of them though were as delicious, in my opinion, as the oat milk chocolate that I'm going to show you how to make today. It's a plant-based oat milk chocolate, so there's no dairy used, but it still has a really beautiful richness and it's not cloying, so you get this really nice unmuted pure chocolate flavour. And it's a darker milk chocolate too, at 55% cocoa solid, so you get more of those complex, intense dark chocolate flavours than you normally would, but still with the soft, creamy texture and caramel notes of a milk chocolate. And this video is going to expand on my previous video about chocolate making, where I went in depth through the whole process from roasting and grinding your beans through to your finished tempered homemade chocolate. So here I will mention, but I'll just skim over some parts of the basic chocolate making process. And if you want to see those in more detail, you can find that in that first video. And today I'm going to be showing you this oat milk chocolate, but the principle here is really flexible and you could easily adapt this to work with other ingredients. And so I've made black sesame chocolate, caramelized almond white chocolate, and you could experiment with adding things like dried fruits into your chocolate too. So there's loads of scope for creativity. The crucial piece of equipment that I'll be using that you can't replace is a stone grinder, or sometimes called a melanger. And this is what you need in order to grind your chocolate smooth enough that you get that unique, beautiful, smooth chocolate texture. These aren't very expensive and they are really a necessity for making your own small batch, high quality chocolate. Nothing else is really going to get you a fine enough texture. So have a look through the process and if you find it interesting, then one of these might be a good investment anyway. And it also allows you to make things like your own nut pastes and pralines too. So let's go through the recipe and I'll also put all the details and amounts down in the video description. So first off, for this small batch of chocolate, I need to roast my cocoa beans. I'm using the same Chuncho Cusco beans that I used in my main chocolate making video too, so you can see a bit more about them and the process of roasting them there. Once the beans are roasted, they're lightly cracked and then I separate the skins from the nibs using a blow dryer and Again, you can see the full detail on that process in my bean to bar video. I give my prepared cocoa nibs a quick blitz in the blender just to break them down a little before grinding. And then I'm going to warm up the stones for my chocolate grinder before we start it grinding as well. And this helps the whole process run more smoothly and a little faster. Then I pour some of my warmed cocoa butter onto the stones to lubricate them. And over the course of an hour, I gradually add in my prepared cocoa nibs and the rest of the cocoa butter bit by bit. Next, I'm ready to add in the oats. And we can't add any water-based liquids into chocolate whilst we're making it because that would ruin the chocolate. So if you're making a milk chocolate, you add milk powder rather than whole milk, for example. And here I'm going to add some ground oats rather than oat milk because guess what? If you take out the water from oat milk, you've got oats. Then once this mix has been grinding for a few hours and is fairly smooth, I'll add in the sugar. And then lastly, I add some lecithin for fluidity and a little salt for flavor. This needs to grind continuously now for at least 24 hours, but up to 48 hours to get it as smooth as possible. Once it's ready, I will temper my finished chocolate and I do this by adding in 1% of pre-tempered cocoa butter that I specifically make for this. And I have a whole video about my tempering technique, so if you want to learn more about this, you can go and see it there. The one thing that I would note here is that normally I add 1% of pre-tempered cocoa butter, but for this oat milk chocolate, I found that 2% works better to give you a perfectly tempered chocolate. Then you can cast your tempered oat milk chocolate into trays or molds and use it however you'd like to use it. It's really delicious and kind of a revelation in terms of milk chocolate, I think. So I highly recommend making this if you're interested in chocolate making.
And you can watch my step-by-step -step chocolate making video if you want to go more in depth on all the instructions of the process of making your own bean to bar chocolate. Next up I have one more video to go on this topic where I'm going to take this idea a step further and we'll be making a almond milk white chocolate. So subscribe to make sure that you don't miss that. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.